Um, you will not be on the screen, or at least we hope you won't be on the screen. It should just be the actual presentation or our apricot screen. So don't worry about that. You, if you need to do what you need to do, that's totally fine. Um, but we are going to get started. So I just wanted to start, first of all, thank you all for being here. Um, I think most of you know that we, our team has a love for apricot that borders on unhealthy. So we are just so excited to share our love and knowledge of apricot with you and get you all on board and up to speed as one of our main goals for you is self-sufficiency. We want you to feel confident and comfortable using apricot within your organization. And as much as we wanna work with you all forever and ever, like you're all capable, you've all got this. Like we just can't wait to support you in getting these resources. So we're going to kick it off um, by doing a quick round of introductions of who you're going to be seeing um, from our team. So I will go first. Most of you know me. My name is Janae Teal. I am the Director of Data Management with the Capacity Collective. And you'll see on the screen that uh, our little apricots have things next to them. And those are our favorite tool in apricot. And my favorite tool in Apricot is Wizard Links, and it's because I'm secretly a Gryffindor. So anything that has wizard in it speaks directly to my heart. So I will let the rest of my team introduce themselves. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Heather Eckert. I am a program manager. Uh, my favorite Apricot tool is email triggers. They're fantastic for their, you can include them in forms, and they allow you to automate a, a, a very, uh, when you have a structured process, something that you do over and over and over and you need to communicate, you can automate it, but with um, a little bit of creative control and um, I think they're really fun to build. Hello everyone. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Helen Hammer. My favorite tool in Apricot is Form Logic. and next session with my lovely colleague, Sarah, you'll learn all about that. Hi, <laughs> my name is Sarah Campbell, and uh, I am a program analyst like Helen. I, I work primarily with open arms right now, but that will be expanding in the future. And I will be leading the class on apricot forms. And my favorite feature in apricot is apricot connect, which has been a total lifesaver for organizations when people couldn't come in the office. Um, so it's a great way to have that, your um, clients fill out their information and it gets automatically uploaded into your database, which is just a really cool feature. Awesome, thanks team. You'll be hearing from each of us at different points throughout camp. So I wanted you to get a lay of the land of who we're working with. Next, we want to know who is here. So there's a couple ways that we're going to be doing this. The first is that we are asking you to update your name in Zoom to include your organization. Um, I don't think that many of you work together or are often together in the same room. So just so you can see a variety of folks that are here, we have organizations that aren't in the state of Washington. So it's cool to see beyond just our little BSK scope, because believe it or not, we work with non-BSK clients. I know, shocker. Um, so to do that, there's the bar across the bottom of your Zoom. Um, there is a participants button. If you click on that, it will take you to the list of participants where you can hover over your name, click rename, add whatever you want. If you'd like to add your pronouns, go for it. But for right now, we're just asking that you have your name and organization. Uh, the next thing, we'd love to give you an opportunity to practice in the chat. Um, we are gonna encourage the use of the chat throughout as I am not gonna be able to answer every question. So in the chat, we would love for everyone to drop a, a quick line, a word, what is your favorite part of your current role or job? And I'm going to go look at them as well because I want to see what you all say. None of you are saying anything. 
<laughs> the second Janata type. <laughs> Oh, these are great. Oh, yes. So many babies, so many babies and so many cats. <sighs> Wonderful. I super appreciate that you all are participating. And then the other thing that we wanted to do is in addition to getting a lay of the land of what organizations you represent, there are different roles within Apricot, and we're going to talk about some of those today. But I just want to know, what is your current role in Apricot? So you should see a poll pop up. If you don't know, that's OK. Um, you know, we're, we're going to learn as we go. But I would just love to see in general who is here. Not going to lie, kind of relieved that guest users didn't waste their time coming, so good, good job. Awesome. Nice. Okay, so we've got a lot of administrators. That's great. Not to say that this will not be applicable to you if you are not an administrator, um, but you know it's admin camp, so it makes sense that there's a lot of administrators here. Awesome. Thank you all so much for participating. Next, we're just going to quickly go through some housekeeping stuff. You all have been on a million Zoom calls over the past year. We're not going to get into it deep. Um, the first thing is that we ask, if you're not talking, please mute yourself. Um, if the garbage is getting picked up outside your house, if your spouse is running the blender, please, please mute yourself. These are all scenarios that I've experienced. Um, the next is cameras are optional, but we'd love to see you. I think we've all been in those situations where you're just talking to just a sea of black screens. It's a little awkward, but I also do not want to force you to put your face on the screen. So it's completely and entirely up to you. Evaluations. We are data nerds. We love data, which means we want to collect feedback from you so we can continue to grow and improve. So at the end of each session, we will be giving you a Apricot Connect link to participate in an evaluation. And then last, we want to encourage you to use the chat. One of my team members will be monitoring the chat. So ask questions. There's a large chance that someone else on this call will know the answer, like resource share, use each other, but please do ask questions. Um, also know that this, I've said this, but this is gonna be recorded. Um, we have not come up with a creative way yet to share it with you all because it will be a large file. We might just put it in all of your apricots. So to be determined on that. Next, I would like to give you an overview of admin camp. So we've been talking about this forever. What is admin camp? What can you expect? So admin camp is going to be a three and a half ish month series of seven topic specific sessions. So I think as most of you know, apricot is not one of those th things you learn overnight. You don't log in, figure it out, and then you know everything there is to know about apricot. So we broke it into sessions that are specific to certain topics that we think you're going to need to know to be successful in apricot. We will not cover everything we still don't know everything. So just know that the things that we picked to share with you and teach you are things that you will be using on a regular basis. They're the most common functionalities of Apricot. In addition, we know that because we can't cover everything on the off weeks, so because camp is every other week, on the off weeks, we will be having office hours. So you can come ask your questions, meet folks, um, you can get one-on-one -on -one support if you want, but we just want to extend support beyond camp. Next, I don't know how many of you I have accidentally told this to, there will be homework. I know that's probably not what many of you wanted to hear, but apricot is one of those things that you learn by doing. You, you, you have to practice, you have to do. You can watch all the training videos in the world. If you don't do it, you're not gonna remember how. So we're gonna give you very low level, like you don't have to write 
five paragraph essays. Like it's going to be pretty easy, but it's just to get you to kind of practice and apply some of those skills we'll be learning. We will also be providing you with some quick guides. I think most of you who have worked with us in Apricot have seen at least a quick guide. Uh, it's just a really digestible, quick how-to document. The quick guides for camp are going to be set up a little bit differently. Rather than show you all the things we talked about, we're going to provide you with some resources. Like here, here's a video for how to build that form. Here is an article of where to click to make that change in the report. So hopefully it will lead you to some resources that are really helpful for you in the future. And then last, you know, because we just have to be extra about everything. If you participate and do your homework, you will become the Capacity Collective Apricot Admin Certified. Um, there will not be a LinkedIn badge. Apricot will not validate it, but we will validate it. And so that's the most important part. So if you really care about certificates and bragging rights, that, that, is, that is a possibility. Next, I'm just going to give you a quick overview. Most of you have seen this of what to expect. Most of you responded that you're administrators. However, for those of you who are not, so if you're a super user or a standard user, we are giving you the option to self-select into the topics that are going to be most relevant to you. So if you don't have access to some of these things, you can still come. No one's uninvited. It just might not be as applicable. Administrators, all of this will apply. Super users, some of this will apply. Standard users, thanks for being here. I don't know how much of this stuff you can do at this time. But just to give you a quick overview, I'm going to be bookending. So I'm going to be doing your intro today. And then I will be doing the end of the series with BSK reporting, which I know we're all just super, super excited about. Sarah is going to be kicking us off next week with forms followed by reports and data visualization with Heather. We're gonna be back to Sarah doing dashboards and bulletins. Helen is gonna walk us through classes and attendance. And then Helen's gonna finish off the actual Apricot content with Apricot Connect and referral functions. So there will be other stuff that's mentioned throughout, but these are the high level topics that we're gonna be discussing. So one of the things that we struggled with in trying to figure out how to deliver information to you about Apricot in a systematic way was, how do we make this to where it's not hypotheticals or one-offs or here's some sample Apricot, this is how you would do it. Our team decided that we are going to, with you, develop a new program. So we made up this organization, it's called Stronger Together, and in that organization, we have created a program called Girl Up. And so for the, the folks who work at STEM Paths, shout out to you. We are inspired by your work. And we decided to make some kind of like girl youth development mentorship STEM program. Uh, we're going to be using this foundation to show you how to build Apricot. So we're going to be building forms that support this program. We're going to be teaching you class attendance through the scope of this program. So throughout camp, we're going to be seeing the development of this program instead of just teaching you random one-offs that really don't have any context. So you'll see us referring to this quite a bit. Now we get to dive into Apricot 101. For those of you who have worked a lot in Apricot, you get what you get on this. There are some folks who are brand new to Apricot, some people who just started with their organizations. So I don't wanna kick off super, just dive right into content. I wanna make sure that folks have the lay of the land, that we're all using similar language, that we know when we say click here, this is what it means. So we're gonna be doing an Apricot overview. And then the three like topics that we're gonna be covering today are users and user types, sites and programs, and the lovely permissions. So these are the three things that kind of set the foundation for your apricot. We don't talk about them very often because most of you have them and you're already in apricot and it's working, but these are the foundational pieces to even having your database. So 
even though they you'll touch them maybe the least, they're really, really important for the sustainability of your program. But we want to set, set a tone. We want you to keep all of these things in mind the entire time through the entire, the entire series. First off, apricot is easy and apricot is hard. I think for those of you who have been in administrator roles for a while, this really resonates with you. Apricot is easy in that the actual interface is fantastic. It's drag and drop, it's cute colors, it doesn't feel like a traditional database. I don't know if anyone's worked in like SQL or you know databases that are really numbery and complex. Apricot is cute. It's it's got a great user interface. However, in some instances, that's really misleading because you're like, oh, it's so easy. I can just do that thing. And you know, you don't necessarily take into account the unintended consequences. So just know, keep in mind in all things, apricot is easy and apricot is hard. Next, and it's so funny, we talked about this as a team right before we started this call. There isn't actually a single right way to do anything in apricot. Like, I was like, oh, this is how I do it. And Sarah was like, no, this, this is how I do it. And Helen's like, I do it this way. So what you're gonna find is that we're gonna show you the way that we do it. And if you find another way to accomplish the same thing, great. Like there is no single right way to do this. The other thing is that this is not a perfect science. You are going to mess up. You are going to freak out. You're gonna have nightmares, like it's okay. This is a database. The fact that you care that much is a good thing. Like you are gonna mess up. I mess up regularly. I have been in this database for over two years. I love it. I feel confident in it. I still mess up, that's okay. Which leads me to, we're all in this together. Like, I want you to know that like everyone here is an apricot. Like, I don't know how or why we've created this hub of like the greater Seattle apricotters, but we did. And so you're all in this together. You're all also doing similar work. Like that's one of the benefits of BSK is you all kind of have similar ways you're doing your work. So use each other, know that we're all in this together and that we're all learning. Like no question is a dumb question. I learn from my team every single day. And then this bullet point is going to seem vague. So I apologize. I will give you more context in a minute. When we know, you'll know. And this is what I'm referring to. So for those of you who don't know, I've been holding out on this. Apricot is changing. And we just found out. So most of you are used to this very cute interface, the apricot with the little fruit and its color scheme. Social solutions is growing and expanding, and that is, that's a good thing. They have purchased out a few new databases. They are becoming, you know, recognized on a national level. Like you're, you're working in a really cool system. However, as part of that, you're going to be working within a system that's going to change. And part of being a database administrator is being able to ebb and flow with things that change. And so there's going to be times during camp where you're like, that's not what my apricot looks like, or I've never seen that before. There is a likelihood that we've never seen it either. There are new things in apricot I have not mastered yet. I, they're brand new. I don't know anything about them. So just know that all we know is that sometime in June, there are going to be interface changes in apricot. To my previous bullet, when we know, you'll know. The second we get information, you will know. The second we are able to provide you with new training resources, updated materials, you will have them. Like we've got you, just know that this is happening to us too. So we're just gonna do the very best that we can. Next, we are going to dive into users. So this is where we're going to kind of switch gears of like, general overview admin campy stuff to actual content. And I wanted to preface with the change because what you're going to notice in camp is that we're going to start referencing to things the new way 
and the old way. And I just want to call out that I know for some of you, the old way is the only way, like you don't know the new way yet because your systems haven't switched. And for the folks who have the new way, you would never have known the old way because you got the system after those changes had been made. So just know that typically we would show you one way, but for a couple things, we're gonna be showing you old way, new way. And for me, that impacts all three of my topics today. So you're gonna be learning about users, sites and programs and permissions all from the new way, old way perspective. I'm going to be going through slides and explaining things and then I'm gonna hop into Apricot and do some more hands-on show you it act in action. But it's gonna be super hard to toggle back and forth. So we'll just do slides first. So Apricot users, it's gonna, I mean, this is, this is your database. This is how you have a database is you have users that are in your database. In the old way, which is what you're looking at now, users were super visible. You always had the ability to see their username, their, their actual name, their user type and see their profile photo. Each user was able to have a pop-up window that opened, you can customize their settings, you can do all these things. For those of you who know that interface, that is going away. The new interface does not operate like that. The new interface is actually going to look something to this effect. There are many pros and cons. I want to go over this more because this is going to be the newer experience. So pros to this is that you are able to search for users in a more nuanced way. So first of all, you're gonna be able to search for users by really anything generically, probably their name. You're also gonna be able to search for users by program so depending on which program that specific user is assigned to, you can search for them by program. And then finally, you can search for them by role. We are going to talk about role-based permissions here in a little bit, but Apricot is going to be transitioning to a way of tracking users by their role, not by their user type. So it's gonna be a bit of a change for folks, but it does really quickly and easily allow you to search for folks. The next thing is it's just a more clean interface. Like I, I do like the, the look of the new one and I don't wanna be negative Nancy, but there are, there, are some pro, there are some cons mixed in here. First con, you can no longer update your profile photo. I don't know why I miss it already, but you will always be this little gray human and there's nothing we can do about it. We have looked for the button more times than I would like to admit. The next thing is that for some of you, you're always asking like, how many users do we have left? What, what types of users do we have? So now that's gonna be, that information is gonna be present on your home base for Apricot users. So you'll be able to quickly see at the top, you have this many administrators, this is how many are left. This is how many standard users, this is how many are left. For those of you who do have the guest user portal, which is a lot of you, there will also be a guest user list. Because you have so many of those, it's probably not going to be as big of a deal. But being able to easily monitor how many users you have is really important. The other interface functionalities haven't really changed. You click add new user. I will show you what that looks like on the back end um, once we switch over to actual Apricot. So then I want to review types of users. So we've had lots and lots and lots of conversations about this. And some people are still struggling to know like, what kind of user am I? What kind of user should I make my staff? What makes the most sense? So let's work through this. The first type of user is an administrator. An administrator is an actual type of user. And most of you have two of them. Some of you have three. Some of you have four, most of you have two. And super sorry, I am almost all of your administrators. So most of you only have one actual administrator available to you right now because I'm holding that other spot. You'll get that back. But what is an administrator? So an administrator has the highest level of access in Apricot. And what makes an administrator different than any other type of user is that their 
permissions, functionality, access cannot be edited. You are an administrator, you see everything. That, that's it. Like you can't fix what an administrator sees. Next, no matter what, and you need to consider this, they, it, on the note that they can see everything, that means every client, every site, every program, every case note. Choose your administrators wisely. Like if you have someone where you're like, you know what, I don't know if this person's the best person to be poking around in people's case files. Maybe that person shouldn't be an administrator. It needs to be someone who your organization is comfortable and confident seeing all levels. Of course, we ask that you follow good data confidentiality procedures and you know HIPAA compliance, but just know as a default, administrators are gonna see everything. And then finally, this is something Apricot doesn't tell you. This is something that our team has discovered. Being an administrator is a role, but it is also a responsibility. It is your responsibility as an administrator to always have your eyes on the big picture. You have to know the consequences of changes in the system. You have to know we're running out of users. Maybe I should talk to the executive director. You have to know, hey, program, if you change that one field, it's going to impact these other four programs. Like, it's a lot of responsibility. And I don't think any of you will take it lightly. I think that's why you're here. But just know that's that's kind of our, our baseline of apricot is easy and apricot is hard because you you it's it's a lot of responsibility to, to manage at a very high level complex organizations that have 10 million things going on at any given time. So just know it's something to be taken seriously. It's also a real thing. Like it's professional development. It is something you can put on your resume. Like this is a skill. This is not something that you're like, oh, my boss told me I had to. Like you, you are growing professionally by having this as part of your work. Next is super user. Do not go to Apricot and ask them about super users. They will not know what you're talking about. Super users are a, a type of user that is coined and used by the Capacity Collective. So what it was is it is our workaround to make sure that your organization can be financially responsible in Apricot. Admins are really expensive. They are the most expensive type of user that you will add to Apricot. And most people don't really need more admins. They need more users with a few more abilities to do things. So what a super user is, is it's a standard user. Like you can't assign someone super user. They're a standard user that you are allowed to give additional privileges to. So there are areas of apricot that super users can access. So for example, you can give a standard user access to build a form. You can give a super user access to edit or build a report. You can give a super user access to manage your users. So what we tell folks in terms of best practice, have the folks who are running your programs be super users. Like if you need to run reports in order, like if you're the person who is responsible for pulling data, running reports and submitting to funder, you should have access to working with reports in Apricot. It does not make sense for every month you to run to your administrator and say, hey, can you run these three reports for me? Like program managers, program coordinators, that is where you want your super users. Those are the people who are gonna make administrators jobs so much easier because then your administrators aren't managing every micro detail of every single program. So don't, don't have a free for all with, with super users, use them wisely. You will find that if people have, if too many people have access, you will log in and your apricot will look different. And you're gonna have to reverse engineer who did it. And you're gonna have to tell them to not do that. So it's just easier to set the foundation of these are our super users and these are our norms. The next type of user is standard user. This is the most common. Most of you, if you are not an actual ad assigned administrator, 
you are a standard user. You could also be a super user, but you are a standard user. Um, the nice thing about standard users is their, um, their access and their privileges are the most flexible. You can say they have this program, they have this type of form, they have access to this class, but not that class. Like, you can get into really finite details with standard users, which makes them, to me, the easiest type. And because they don't have access to really change the fundamentals of the database, they're less risky in some ways. Like I, I think standard users are a very, very good use of your user spots. And all of their permissions are managed by your administrators. So unless you give a super user access to work with your users, the only people who should be monitoring and changing permissions in terms of standard users are your administrators. And then our last and everyone's least favorite is guest users. So guest users are a blessing and a curse. They are amazing for organizations who have a large group of people who all have similar roles and responsibilities. They are less wonderful for organizations who are like, look, everyone kind of has their own job. This person needs this access. This person needs this access. Like guest users don't always make that, like that, that functionality cannot work. So I know that most of you know this, I just want to reiterate it. The big difference with guest users is that they have access to five forms total, never going to change. That doesn't mean some have this, some have this, five forms forever and ever. And our best practice is don't change those. If your job becomes, oh, well, they need this form today and that form tomorrow and this form in three weeks, the amount of maintenance that's going to go into that and the amount of just user error that you're going to have to work within is going to be a lot. And it's just, it's not worth it. So think through the most strategic way to use your guest users so you're not constantly having to manage what people can and can't see. On that, we are going to ask you a question. I just told you, so you should know. So the question is, each guest user can access their own custom set of five forms. It's like watching it on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, you know, like the live data. It's very exciting. All right. Y'all, we need to talk. This is false. Guest users cannot, oh look, lots of screens. Guest users cannot have access to their own unique five forms. They get five forms. So all guest users, and most of you have 50 of them. Guest users come in packages of 50, which is a little bit ridiculous, but in situations where they're helpful, they're really helpful but guest users can only access five forms. It doesn't matter what program they're enrolled in. It doesn't matter if they're a case manager or an executive director, it does not matter. If their user type equals guest user, five forms. Which has led to a lot of really creative workarounds for us. I've worked with a lot of you on creative workarounds. Okay, the next thing. And again, we're going to go through this live. So just work with me as we go through the slides. The next thing that we're going to talk about is sites and programs. Again, this is a foundational piece of your database. If you just have Apricot and there's no sites and programs, your data and your people have nowhere to go. So you have to make sure that you have your sites and programs set up in a way that works for your organization. This is the old way. The old way in Apricot is you go into sites and programs, and the first thing that you see are your sites. So the way that Apricot explains them, and I've seen this done in a variety of ways, is sites are often used for organizations who have multiple physical sites. Not that you have multiple programs, 
but that you have a SeaTac office and you have a Kirkland office and you have a, I don't know, somewhere else. Like those would be your sites because those are three distinct locations in which your organization operates. The programs are the programs that are under each site. So our SeaTac site has these four programs, but our Kent site has these two programs. So it allows folks who have multiple locations to monitor those and run those completely independently of each other while simultaneously being able to report on both of them because they're all part of the same system. So it's pretty slick. Most of you don't use multiple sites because most of you don't have multiple sites. And even for those of you who do, your programming is likely consistent across sites. So it's not always beneficial to have multiple sites. Under, like I said, under the sites are all the programs. We will look into that later. This is the new way. It's not that different, but it is different. Um, same concept, you, you unhide the site, you see the programs. Um, you can have as many as you need. Most have one to two. Um, having multiple sites really complicates your permissions. So think about it before you do it. And I wanna actually ask you all a question before I tell you the answer, because I'm curious to see how you would expect to interface with Apricot. So Heather, if you wanna put up this poll, the next question is, I can delete a program from my site if it is no longer in use. All right, okay. So the majority of you had said false and that is correct. That is the correct answer. Apricot, for those of you who have worked in it a lot, I think one of your primary frustrations is that Apricot does not believe in delete, which in many cases I am thankful for on a daily basis. Like I am so thankful that you can't just accidentally go and delete things. However, I wish someone had permission to delete some stuff because organizations are constantly evolving and shifting and you might have one program that was one time funded by this one grant, you just want to put it in apricot, close it out. You can't. You can archive everything in apricot. Everything is archivable, which I guess in some ways is safe because then you're never losing anything that was attached to that program. But it just makes it really frustrating for those type A personalities that are like, I just need it to be tidy and I need it to look a certain way. The further you get into your apricot development, the more things are just going to, you're going to have inactive things all over the place and you're going to have things that are hidden. That's okay. Like until we get the magic power to delete things or to hide things, inactive is the, is the way that it, it works. This new interface, again, allows you to add new sites and programs right from here. The options that you have once you open those fields is a little bit different. So we'll be looking at that when I get into Apricot. Permissions. We could spend an entire admin camp on permissions. And I think that most of the messages that I get from you all are something to the effect of, so-and-so needs to see this and they can't, why? That is a very, that's a good question. And 99% of the time it's because they don't have the right permissions. They, you have not told Apricot, hey Apricot, this doula needs to be able to fill out this form and see this bulletin and run this report. And so you have to tell Apricot all of those things. Uh, my team commonly uses this word auto magic. Apricot is not auto magic. It does not know that new doula A needs these three things. You have to tell it. And so managing permissions is a really, really important part of the administrator role. Like it is your responsibility to make sure that people can see what you need them to see. So back to the new way, old way. This is the old way. I personally like the old way. I am trying very hard to like the new way. 
this way to me makes a lot of sense. So when you go in to assign permissions for users, typically you have five functionalities in which you operate in your permissions. You've got forms, reports, bulletins, shared files, and then referrals. The ones you will be working in the most commonly are the first four. Referrals, program specific, really depends on how your program tracks referrals. What's nice about Apricot is that the way that they categorize things across the, the instance is the same. So the way that your forms are organized, the way that your reports are organized, all of that's gonna be consistent across your Apricot, which makes giving permissions pretty easy. You just have to make sure it's something you're constantly upkeeping. So for forms, when you're on the forms tab, what it's gonna do is it's going to show you a list of all of your forms. And since administrators do this, you're literally going to see every form, which for some of you is a lot. If the form is not indented, it's a tier one. We'll be talking about types of forms at next camp. So don't worry if you don't know what a tier one is. The indented form is a tier two. You cannot give someone access to a tier two if they don't, whoops, if they don't have access to a tier one. So you have to make sure that you're clicking accordingly. What's nice is the click boxes update. So if you click on client intake form and client profile is not selected, it will select it for you. Like it helps to like self-correct. So you, it's pretty easy once you get the group. Then in addition to each large category, there are subcategories. You have view, search, create, edit, archive, ignore program assignment, apply user RLA, and then create and edit forms. That's a lot of options, but they all do very different things. View, self-explanatory. Search, pretty self-explanatory. You want people to be able to see and search for the forms they need access to. Most cases, you'll want folks to create. If they can see them, you'll want them to be able to fill them out. Maybe not always. Maybe you want some things to be view only. That's okay. It depends on the structure of your organization. Edit. Edit gets tricky. Some orgs are like, I want you to submit that form and I don't want you to be able to go in and change it. Great. Don't give them access to edit. That's fine. It's all like internal organization decision. Archive record. Archive record is a scary one. So you'll notice that for a tier one, it says NA. No one but an administrator can archive a tier one record. And that is a safety precaution. Tier ones are your clients. Tier ones are your classes. Tier ones are your households. If everyone can archive a family or a client, or it's a mess. You're going to go in, all your clients are going to be gone. However, you can give folks access to archiving tier twos. So example, your tier one is your client, your tier two is your home visit form. If a home visitor enters a duplicate home visit form, you can give them access to archive that duplicate. Do they, do, do they archive the wrong one? Sometimes. Do they archive all of them? Sometimes. So just know like every decision you make could have an unintended consequence. Make the big thing, train your staff. If you give them a new permission, if you give them access, tell them and show them what to do. Ignore program assignment, apply user RLA, those are going away. Those are not going to be existing anymore. They're getting modified the way that they're done. So we don't need to necessarily get into that. The last is to create edit forms. That is to change the actual form. So if the form says, what is your race? And there are six categories. If you give this user access to create an edit form, they can go in and add a new category strongly discourage not doing that without training, support, internal conversations around data quality, like making changes like that, super easy. Changes like that can also lead to where did all of our data go? So just know this is not this is another button I don't click lightly. Like, yes, some people need this functionality, 
not everyone needs this functionality. This is the new interface. I'm going to walk you through the new sections as opposed to just forms. It looks similar. I see some of your faces are not, are not thrilled with this change. I feel ya. So one of the, the cons of this, for those of you who set permissions, you used to be able to click and drag and it would populate all of your boxes. That functionality is gone. You now are back to click, 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 click. Have such a good time with that. The next is that, but there is, there is a pro. You can hit these little flippies at the top and it populates down. So if you're like, you know what, this person needs everything except these three forms, auto fill it down, go take away a few privileges. It's way easier than click, 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 click. Um, all the columns have that. So it usually makes it pretty easy. And if your forms are organized well, it really makes it easy because all of your tier ones and tier two should be organized in a systematic way. So forms haven't really changed other than there is this new button called caseloads. We don't know what that means. So as soon as we know what that means, you will know what that means. My assumption is that it's going to allow you to put clients in different caseloads, but I don't know. So there's going to be future trainings and resources provided on this new caseload functionality. Stay tuned. The next tabs are reports, aggregate reports. We don't know what those are either. I mean, I know what an aggregate report is. I don't know what that means in the context of apricot. Bulletins, some of you know those as bulletins. Some of you know those as dashboards, my bad. I have special names for everything. Referrals, which as I mentioned is something that is used by some programs and not by others. And then the last is shared files. I will show you again, intricacies of these once we get into apricot, which is now. So let's hop on over to apricot, my favorite place on earth. Welcome, welcome to our apricot. Um, I think most of you will see this and go, oh, hey, that kind of looks like my apricot. We have similar branding, um, that's okay. But this, this is apricot. So for those of you who have not been in apricot a lot, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a general tour and then I'm going to show you the actual ins and outs of what's in apricot in terms of the three topics we've talked about today. So this is your apricot home screen. This is what you're going to see when you log into Apricot. My team refers to this view as the front end. So when we're saying go look at it from the front end, we mean go look at it from the perspective of, of a non-administrator user. This is what your users are going to see. Your gray bar across the side is your menu. Your menu is standard, but it's also very customizable. So in search records, you will find all of your primary forms. In hidden records, if you're like me, you will tuck away all the stuff that you don't want in search records, which is essentially just a second place to store your forms. And then the place where a lot of the action happens is in my apricot tools. So as an administrator and a super user, many of the things that you find in my apricot tools will be helpful. This is where you access reports. This is where you access bulletins, where you access your shared files. This is where you would access your referrals if that's a functionality your organization uses. You'll notice I skipped a few. I don't know what they are, um, but this gives us a preview into cool functions that are coming. So there is a caseload functionality that's going to be coming to Apricot. There is a schedule functionality that's coming to Apricot. I'm excited and terrified. We'll see. It's probably going to be awesome. But this is where you go. This is your navigation menu. Everything will take you to the spot in the database that you have been assigned the permission to see. So if my view is different from Helen's view, that's different from Sarah's view, it's because we all have been set up with different permissions. Administrators, you're going to see everything. For those of you who have a million things on your home screen, Administrators know what I'm talking about. You can see everything. So just know that when your users are like, hey, I can't see that report folder, that's why. The other things that I just wanna quickly point out are some of the resources that are in Apricot. There's a lot of opportunity for self-sufficiency. 
There are COVID resources. I have never personally accessed them, um, but Apricot has been taking that very seriously. So there's some like data confidentiality stuff in there. If you're interested, check it out. Customer care is where you would go to submit a help ticket. So similarly to the way that my team has Apricot support tickets, you can submit an actual ticket to Apricot. Um, personal preference, if you want to do it, great. If you don't want to do it, great. Um, it's a very standard tech-based ticketing system. They monitor them through email, do with, with them what you will. The Help Center, I found this out today. Thank you, Sarah. The Help Center takes you to the apricot knowledge base. Um, I think most of you have heard me refer to this as apricot Google. My bad. It's called the knowledge base. That is where you go to find resources that help to answer your questions. The knowledge base is full, like full to the brim of training videos, articles, community, like everything you would need to be successful in Apricot can be found in the Help Center. Literally everything I know about Apricot, I learned from the Help Center, like everything. You can, you can search for anything. That's why I call it Google and you will likely find a result that is helpful. And then this last thing, I love this, submit an idea. Um, Y'all use Apricot every day. You all know what needs to be fixed and what's not working. Apricot takes it super, super seriously. If you have an idea, if you're like, this doesn't work, I wanna be able to do this. I wanna be able to sort clients alphabetically or by phone number or by zip code get in there, make a suggestion. What's also nice is that you can vote on other people's ideas and it just becomes like, make sure you have lots of time in your schedule because you can spend all day and they're voting on everyone's good ideas. So it's awesome. And they take it really seriously. Like, I'm not kidding. They'll follow up with you and be like, thank you for submitting your idea. This is the status of your idea. Like they take it really seriously. So engage with it. The last thing I use this on a daily basis is your little green chat at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. This is going to be the first place you start to notice new apricot emerging, new logo, new colors. Um, but two things can happen in this screen. The first thing is that you can start a conversation with apricot. Don't start a conversation with apricot unless you are the administrator. And here is why. Every one of you I've checked has the standard support package. The standard support package in Apricot comes with five chats per month. Yes, you can use them. Like, don't be afraid if you're like, I am stuck. I, I do not know. They're an excellent resource. All of them are very nice. They're really helpful. I've had tremendous, like I've learned a ton from the Apricot chat you have to be mindful that you do run out. My best advice, stockpile your questions, use one chat to ask five questions. <laughs> Don't tell Apricot I told you that, but it works. Like it's not worth using every time when at the end of the week, you're like, I'm just gonna sit on chat for an hour and get all my questions answered. It's a really effective way to do it. You can also use this find your answers now that will take you to the knowledge base. So there's the two ways to do it. It's a personal preference of how. Now I wanna show you the back end, which is where most of you are gonna be spending your time as administrators and super users. So the back end is very similar to the front end, but you have the power to change things. So the things that I'm gonna show you today are users, sites and programs, and permissions. Keeping in mind, this is all the new interface. So for those of you who have the new interface, great. This is gonna look for really familiar. For those of you who don't, th this is what's to come. This is what you should expect relatively soon. So for users, to add, view, monitor, check users, the place that you're gonna go is access control. Most of the labels in Apricot are pretty self-explanatory. You will find some where you're like, that makes no sense, but that's where you go to click. But access control makes sense. Once you're in access control, you have the option to work within your users and you have the option to manage your sites and programs. We're gonna start with users. 
Users, as I mentioned, is going to take you to this interface. For those of you who have not seen this yet, it's really different. Like it takes you to a whole new type of screen. But from here, rather than the old way, you can manage your users, your roles, your caseload manager, and your sites and programs all from one place. So your users are all going to be listed right here. Similar, you can click through, see all your users. Everyone will be listed, even those that are inactive. Um, but you are able to search for individual staff, search for staff by program, and search for staff by roles. Apricot is gravitating towards this new user system where rather than get a permission based on the person or based on the program, permissions are moving towards role, which is gonna be tricky for some of your organizations because people can have multiple roles. People can have really complex roles. And so to just say that someone is a home visitor, not all home visitors need access to the same things. So it's gonna be tricky. We're gonna to have to figure this one out together. But for the most part, the users haven't changed. When you wanna create a new user, you go into new user and there's actually less information that needs to be gathered from you. Before there was all sorts of clicks and this and that and you had to make decisions. Now it's email, name, their user type. If you don't have guest users, guest user will not be there. And then this is where you assign them kind of everything. So you would assign them the sites that you want them to be associated with. And this should be auto-populated based on your sites. So in this case, we have our Stronger Together site, and we also have an Apricot Administrator site. You also, this is where you give your super users the, the power. This clicky is your super user button. When you click this, it is going to say, based on which program, what permissions do you want to give this person? I will preface this with saying all of the options are not yet available. At this time, you are only in the new way. You are only able to grant your super users create and edit forms and unarchive records. I have gotten confirmation that that is expanding to be like the current system that we're working with. But for right now, if you're in the new interface, there are limitations. This is not everything that super users will have access to. This, this list is going to like quadruple. So. Stay tuned. And then this last part is where you assign sites and programs. So when you click on this, you say, I want to assign this user, keeping in mind that this is all at the user level. I want to assign this user the role of a youth tutor in the Girl Up mentorship program. So when you think through that, what that means is there's two things that are happening here. You have to make sure that you have set up the youth tutor permissions correctly. So what does a youth tutor have access to? What forms, what reports? And then what program? What, what forms does the Girl Up program need? Like, do they need the, the parent tracking note? Probably not. So is your Girl Up mentorship program set up correctly? So it's really one of those things where you're constantly reverse engineering and cross-checking because now not only are you managing, you're, you're now managing users, sites and programs and permissions in a very interlocked way, whereas before they were kind of standalone. So now they're all gonna feed into each other in a unique way. So that is how you would go in and create a new user. What's nice is, like I said, you can do it all from that same screen. Um, you will have instances where you're like, okay, I need to assign them a permission, a role that doesn't exist yet, you'd have to go create that. Um, that'll be the last thing we talk about. Now we're going to transition into sites and programs. Sites and programs, very similar to the way they were set up in, in the old way. You've got your sites, which are your primary, and when you unhide them, there's your programs. This is, a, this is how most of your, your apricots are set up. Your site is typically your organization. Your programs are your programs. I know that some of you have sub programs or that you treat your programs as departments. All of that is okay. Some of you have a youth development program and there are three sub programs under that. That's fine. 
We figure out how to integrate that into your program enrollment form. Like you only have sites and programs. You don't, you can't set up a third tier. So just be really creative and thoughtful about the way that you set these up, keeping in mind that like permissions play a big part in what people are gonna see. So if you wanna see what an actual site looks like, it's pretty basic. It used to be like assign an address and all this stuff. Now you literally say the site name, is it active or inactive? You can provide a description. You can provide all of this, but it's not even part of the form anymore. Like, well, not technically part of the form. So most folks are just filling out the basic information. You can add site admins. So this is where you can assign essentially your super users to a particular site or program. It gets a little murky because you might have super users that are over departments instead of programs or over sites instead of like, so it gets really murky. Let's brainstorm together if you have questions about it. Um, but this is, a, this is a piece that takes a lot of thought work to make sure that everything is set up in a way that your users can see what they need to see. Same way that you would look into a site, you can look into a program. The, the eyeball is now the, the new view slash edit. So when you click the eyeball, that's when things happen. And just like sites, programs are pretty boring. Um, program name, is it active? What's the description? And then under that, this is where you get into the role-based permissions. So what roles are needed in this program? So in this case, there's staff and supervisor. That's, that's it. You can unhide it, see who the staff and supervisor are. That's the way you're going to know who is assigned to which role within each program. It's very meta. It's one of these things I highly encourage you to go play with because it makes a lot more sense when you see your staff and your programs and how they're all interconnected. The next thing, how's everybody feeling? I know we can't like technically take questions because there's a lot going on, but if you have questions, drop them in the chat and come to office hours. So the next thing that we're gonna look at is permissions and permissions are, I'm still learning the new way, they're, they're rough. So I know how to access permissions by going back to the home screen. And when you click on the apricot, it will take you back home. Going into the administrator tab and going into access control. So within sites and programs, that's where I play with the permissions. You can play with them on a user basis, but because they're starting to shift away from users and into roles, it's easier to just go to the larger group as opposed to do it on an individual basis. So I'm gonna go into sites and programs. We're gonna be back to this wonderful screen. <laughs> and now we're going to go into the Girl Up Mentorship Program in terms of making permissions. We are going to click on staff and that is where it's going to take us to the permissions. It's not person. You don't wanna to go to Heather's account and give Heather permission. You want to say Heather is a staff in the Girl Up program and staff in the Girl Up program need these things. So this is where you go through and you decide what forms do they need? What level of access of forms do they need? What reports do they need? So all of those decisions are made here. And a lot of the times you're going to guess. And that is why permissions are super hard. You don't often get a solid answer on what someone needs until you find out that they need it because they will message you and they will say, why can't I see this thing? I didn't know you needed to see that thing. So when you have the permission set up based on roles, hopefully it's easier because when all staff need to see it, rather than go staff member by staff member by staff member, you go in, you change it for staff, all staff see it. We don't have to go in to the, to the details of all of these. All of these will directly mirror your list of forms, your list of reports, um, it will, mirror your list of bulletins. Everything is going to mirror across the system. The thing that gets tricky is not knowing 
what the buttons do. Like you're like, oh yeah, I can click it all day long, but I don't know what it, what it does. If it is dark, that means that it is a primary or a tier one. If it is not, if it's unbold, it means it is a tier two or it is a secondary or a category. So if you click on the bold on anything, forms, reports, bulletins, you are giving them access to all of those things. So if I click stronger together bulletins and only the top is selected, by default, they will have access to all four of these. But if I only want them to have access to one, you would unclick this and say, I actually only want them to have access to class attendance. So you have to think through what, what do they really need to see? And a lot of people are like, show me as the least amount of content as humanly possible, which I totally get. It gets really overwhelming. One of the things that I want to just emphasize is that shared files is a really, really important place to put things. So shared files, again, so sorry, Janae terms. I call this apricot Dropbox. Um, this is where your organization can share across the org resources, training materials. It's where you upload photos. It's where you keep staff pictures. Whatever it is that your organization needs to file in terms of apricot, I suggest using shared files. But if you have your leadership team that wants to share a certain folder of you know, draft evaluation letters and only you, only supervisors should see that, you can narrow down permissions all the way to shared files. So any of these things allow you to get into the granular level of permission, which means you have a lot of power. So make sure that when you're making decisions that impact large groups of people, you're thinking about the unintended consequences of what that might look like on the front end. Oh, permissions. One of the things that you will have, and I use this every single day, one of the things you will have as an administrator is the power to see apricot from the vantage point of another user. This is how I test everything. So you go in, you make a permission, you want to make sure so-and-so is able to see this thing. Great. I have no idea if they're going to be able to see it. So you log in, you ask them, hey, can you log in and make sure you have this? No. When you are an administrator, when you use your drop down, this drop down up here by your name um, is your, I don't know, your like personal menu. But when you're an administrator, it allows you to see all the users in the system at quick view. And it's by type. So you'll be able to see all your administrators lumped together, all your standard users lumped together, and then all your guest users lumped together. You can view as other administrators, but it's useless because they see the same things as you. But if you wanted to know, did I give Araceli the correct permissions? You can click and you go, oh, I guess I didn't give Araceli the right permissions because this is what Araceli is going to see when she logs in. So something went awry here. And this is where I go, don't, don't email Araceli and tell her her apricot set up because it's not. When she logs in, she's going to have no idea what's going on. However, if you wanted to go look at Audrey, Audrey has the completely different experience. It's like, oh, what button did I push for Audrey? What I found out, I literally just did this. This was not meant to be an example. Araceli is assigned as a staff member. Audrey is assigned as a supervisor. And so it just really depends how you set up your permissions. For those of you who have people-based permissions, this is going to be interesting for us. So I know that a lot of your organizations, we've set up permissions in a way where this doula has this interface and this doula has this interface. So we're going to have to think through, do we make a master doula home visitor case manager view or do we continue to use individual views so everyone has a unique experience? We don't have the answers to that. That's going to be something we probably end up discussing with you all in what's going to work best for your organization. So that's just one of my, my favorite tools that I use on a regular basis. All right, y'all. 
Now we are going to talk homework. How's everyone feeling? I know this homework is not anyone's favorite part, but I'm oddly excited about homework. So the homework is actually to show you one of our new favorite things in Apricot. <laughs> our team has been nerding out about this for weeks. We've been so, so excited. Um, only a few of you have been using this functionality, so I can't wait to show it off. Um, but there's going to be two parts to your homework. Part one is going to be that you have to set yourself up with an Apricot Connect portal. And the Apricot Connect portal is a functionality that allows your clients and families and students to interface with Apricot in a limited capacity. And so just like we log in and we see Apricot, they are going to have the opportunity to log in and experience Apricot from an individual view. So you can log in and update your phone number. You can log in and fill out a confidentiality form. You get to interface with your families in a new way, which has been a development that they came up with since the pandemic. They were like, people used to do intake packets together. People used to, you know, bring things and sign things together. And that's just not the way that we can do it anymore. And so the portal was actually created as a tool to support organizations that still need to have that direct contact with families. So here's how it's gonna work. We are going to set each of you up with a portal. The way that that works is that you are going to, or already have received an email from Heather. Actually, I think it comes from Helen, it comes from one of us. And it looks something to this effect. It will say, hello, the Capacity Collective has granted you access to connect. Click on the link below to set your password and log in. That will take you to this fancy new apricot screen that will take you to the portal. This is the portal. Y'all are going to want this, trust me. When you log into the portal, this is going to be your experience. This is what clients see. This is a very, very customizable tool that we will be teaching you later in camp. But this is going to be your Moodle, Canvas, Blackboard, college level interface platform thing that you use for admin camp. So this is where you're going to sign up for office hours. And this is where you're going to submit your homework. You also have the option to, and I want you to play with this. You have the option to view forms that you've submitted. So if you can't remember what office hours you signed up for, you can go check. If we spelled your name wrong, which, you know, we're, we're human, we could have spelled your name wrong. You can go change your information just the way that a client would. So in the top corner where your name is, it shows that you're a participant. You can go in, click on your account information, and we have given you privileges to update your information. So if we spelled your name wrong, if your organization okay. isn't there, anything that you would like us to know, you can. You can also update and manage your password from here. So this yes, is going to be message. your interface. Um, and so what we're going to do is I hope most of you have gotten an email. Please note that sometimes apricot is temperamental. It might go to your junk mail. We've done most of what we can to make sure it doesn't go to your junk mail, but it might. In the invite, you will be able to go from email to, to portal login to your home screen portal. From there that we ask that by the time we meet together again in two weeks, you complete your first homework assignment. It is not hard. Like, do not email me and say it was hard. And don't email me and say your dog ate it. Like, just, just do your homework. Everything will be fine. They're gonna get harder. I made mine easy so you would like me best. So you get what you get. But please do your homework and know that office hours, we're, we're taking those really seriously. Like depending on who signs up is gonna dictate how my team does this. So if a bunch of people are like, we need breakout groups, we got you. If one person shows up and you need a one-on-one, -on -one, great. Like if we have a bunch of people who need the same thing or have the same questions, great. We're gonna create a little learning community. 
I think that office hours, especially knowing our limited capacity over the next couple months, given that we are going to be working so hard on camp, is just going to give you an opportunity to get your questions answered, regardless of what stage of apricot implementation you're in. So it should be beneficial to all, all levels. Okay, I don't know how, but we got done a little bit early, which is miraculous. So I do want to actually open it up for questions if someone's like, hey, I have no idea what you're talking about. I've never seen apricot before. Can you show me again? Like super safe space. We've all been there. So there's no, there's no reason not to ask. Um, so if anyone has any questions, I am gladly opening up the floor to folks who might have some things they want to know. And while we're waiting for that, I'll just um, make a mention that you should have gotten an email about 1.15 this afternoon inviting you to the portal. If, um, if you don't see it in your inbox, it's probably in your junk mail. Um, if you don't see it in your junk mailbox, then um, I'm going to put a link in the chat where you can um, sign up to prompt that again. Um, but check your junk mail first, because more than likely that's where it went. Is everybody getting it? Like, do most people see it, feel good about it? Okay. I have a question about the uh, homework portal. Yeah. So do we create a different user and password than what we already have? No, In order to so it's, it's gonna go to the email that you are probably using to sign into Apricot. And you can have multiple things going on in Apricot. We all tested, so we all have Apricot logins and portal logins. Mm -hmm. It will be sent to the your work email, the email that we have on. Wait, file. I already got it. Mm -hmm. oh, perfect. Yeah, and then, I mean, I you could all hack my life. My passwords are the same across everything, but you know, pick a password that you'll remember, and you can. So we do have to have a a, a a different password and a different username. Technically, no, like your username and password can be the exact same that they are for like regular. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Thanks. Are there any other questions? Any needs? Did anyone's apricot explode this morning and you just haven't told me yet? I just have a quick question. Um, I received an email about training are you guys going to send me a link for that what training this like admin camp e or you know ne um never mind never okay mind. <laughs> everyone should have the way that the calendar invite was set up is that it's always going to be the same zoom link and you can come or you cannot like we said in the beginning, we really hope that administrators come to the entire series. There will be a lot of really good content. Super users come as needed. Um, if you need us to resend you the invite, great. Please forward it to your staff that need to be here. That's a really important piece. If you're like, oh yeah, we have a program coordinator who's gonna be a super user. They should probably know these things. Like we're only going to do this once, as far as I know, if we get to work with you forever and ever, we'll do it again. But one of the things I want to say, and there's, I'm telling you for two reasons, one, because we're awesome. And two, because it's, we really want you to know, if you were to go through Apricot Bootcamp, which is the equivalent of this from Apricot, it is $3,500. So if you wanted to do some kind of in-depth admin training past your work with us, just know it's incredibly expensive. So we're gonna hook you up with every resource possible because we know that your organizations don't need to pay $3,500 for admin <laughs> training. So the last part is that we're going to ask you to participate in an evaluation. Um, we wanna know how we're doing. We want to be able to grow and evolve these trainings as we go. So we're best meeting your needs. Those of you who have taken trainings from us in the past are gonna recognize the structure. However, it is an apricot connect link. 
So you will be experiencing some of the things that your clients experience when they receive an Apricot Connect link. And it looks like Helen is on it, has dropped the link in the chat. We can potentially add those to the portal as well. It might be a surprise, um, but we do ask that you just at least click there, open it, fill it out at your earliest convenience. And yeah, does anyone have any questions? I am not opposed to leaving early. I know that this was a brain dump for a lot of people. Any needs? All right, I have one more thing to tell you. Almost all of you, I can't think of one of you that doesn't have this yet, almost all of you have this beautiful image at the top of your apricot that says submit an apricot support ticket. None of you except one <laughs> uses it, which is totally okay. We have not told you to use it yet. This is where we want you to start using it. So you're, it's, it's, we're gonna get into it more as we go through camp. The apricot support ticket is an internal system for your organization to request help. So just like you would go down into the corner to the help center and ask apricot, submit a ticket to apricot and say, this thing isn't working. When I click on this, I don't know why. We have developed an internal system that is going to be monitored by your administrators. And so if you're an administrator, you're going to be getting some specific support around how to monitor and manage your apricot support ticket dashboard. Um, but internally, we ask that you start using your ticketing support option. Um, we monitor them. So every time we get a support ticket within your apricot, there is a dashboard that shows new tickets. We know they're there. We will respond. That is the easiest way to communicate with us about your needs. Um, for the organizations that use it, it's very, very successful. It is a way to streamline communication. It's a way to make sure that everyone's on board with changes and that administrators know what's going on with one another. So we just ask that start using it. That doesn't mean that you can't email us. That doesn't mean that you can't ask us questions. We just want to help you to start developing a system that you can use internally once we're gone. And having a system to communicate with your administrators is key because communicating with Apricot is not always the best or fastest route. So if you don't have an Apricot ticket button, you probably will at some point. Um, also keep in mind that this is our implementation of this. We've you know, tested and trialed it out. If it doesn't work for your organization, that's okay. Like we are not forcing this on you. It is just a really good way to communicate with us about your needs. So if you have questions about that, I would definitely suggest hopping on office hours for a little bit and we can talk through that. But for those of you who have it, please, please start using it. And it's very basic. It will be based on your organization. You just indicate your needs, what type of request or problem you're having, explain your request. I click on this button and it doesn't work and I don't know why. Please give us a priority level. Everything feels urgent, everything is not urgent. So I would love to know, I need this by blank in order to successfully do my job. Great, that's how we prioritize. Let us know if there is an actual deadline. If you say next week, I will give it to you on Friday, not Monday. So I need to know what day is it actually due. And then this is a personal preference thing, but how do you want us to contact you? How do you want us to know, like let you know that your ticket is done? So all of yours will look slightly different based on your organization, but it is a really effective way to communicate with us while we're still your administrators. And it's gonna be even more effective communicating with your administrators once we have left you. That's for real all I've got. We've got 15 seconds left on my timer. So go team. It was so wonderful to see you all. I miss you all so much. For those of you who I have not met in person, I'm going to hug the crap out of you. Uh, and I'm not a hugger. Um, I can't wait to see you all next time. As a reminder, next time we are talking about forms. I love forms. I think forms are great. I think it'll answer so many of your questions that you have. So 
please come, please learn all about forms and take your evaluation. Bye everyone, thank you so much.